Shai, I expect that every, every Baruch Blessed be the name of Yahweh, our King and our Deliverer and our Savior, our help. Sadr Abba for blessing us with this Shabbat day. Give us strength to do what is right. Give us the strength to keep our integrity. Do not allow our enemies to reign over us. Do not allow our enemies to prevail over us. But give us the strength to have victory over our enemy. Give us the strength to execute righteous judgment. I would ask that your name will be esteemed throughout all the earth. Forgive us for the times when we did not esteem your name to the best of our abilities. Forgive us for all of our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity. For you are merciful, Elohim. Your mercy endures forever and ever. Help us, O Yah. Please remember those who are afflicted, those who are sick. Please remember those who are battling things within the mind. Please remember those who are frustrated, those who may be sad or depressed. Please remember those who are caring for those who are sick and afflicted. So to about for healing your people and ask that you may continue to heal us as we seek you. And I advise that you may put joy in our heart on this day, on, on this day and I ask that we will not let the affairs of this life cause us to sin against you. I would ask that you may remove sorrow from our hearts. Please remember those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. I would ask that you may give us the strength to esteem your name. And I ask that we will not bless for your name among the nations due to our words and due to our actions. I would ask that none of us will be hypocrites before your face. But I ask that we may all be honest with you and honest with ourselves. And I ask that whatever we say, we will do. And I ask that whatever we do, we'll be righteous. I will almost say Torah Ba for protecting us for many years, even the years before we knew what your Torah was. But I ask that you may be continually merciful upon us. Continue to protect us. Please remember that we are dust and we are flesh and we are sick and pass of old. And give us the strength to help those who are afflicted, to heal the brokenhearted, to provide for those who are, are poor, to be a help to the fathers and the widow and the orphan. Please rule us rightly, Abigail. Give us the strength to do what is right. The Tehillim, Psalms chapter 26 reads, Rule me rightly, O Yah, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in Yah without wavering. Examine me, O Yah, and prove my kidneys and my heart. Try my kidneys and my heart, for your loving commitment is before my eyes. I have walked in your truth, and I have not sat with men of falsehood, nor do I enter with pretenders. I have hated the assembly of evildoers, and I do not sit with the wrong. I wash my hands in innocence, and I walk around your slaughter place, O oh, Yah. I have raised a voice of thanksgiving to declare all your wonders. Yah, I have loved the abode of your house, and the place where, you, your, where your esteem dwells. Do not gather my being together with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, whose hand is apart, and their right hand is filled with bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity, redeem me, show me favor. My foot shall stand on a level place in the assemblies. I bless Yah. Hallelujah. Tell the Bible, I'll be all that you're done for us. Please protect us and guard us. Let your will be done. Amen, amen, seven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Torah, Torah, and though. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bukai. Oh, we about to get started with a with the culture study by our Zakain. I turn the floor to you to my Zakain. Zakain Yaqua, you got the flow. Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Um, Toda Rabah, um, Akisha Shamar for that powerful um Tefila. Toda Rabah. Um <clears throat> Okay, Ms. Baka, um, this is the language portion um, uh, of the service. Um, and, you know, we've been talking a lot about the Hebrew language and the English language in depth. Um, and today, uh, this Shabbat, I want to kind of go back to um, the Hebraic thought process and the English thought process. Um, and specifically, the, the differences in the two processes when it comes to 
comprehending and, and understanding what our forefathers uh, are saying in these scriptures, in the, in the records that they left for us. What are they communicating to us? Hebrews, um, Yisrael. And before we get into the study um, of thought processes, I, I, I want to say um, that this portion here at True Light by Ath Yah um, is our endeavor to try and reconnect with the culture through the language, right? We know that. And, and, but I don't want to kind of, I don't want it to seem like if, if, if you're not interested in the language, um, that you're missing out on something. The most high said that with a, with stammering lips and a different tongue, will I teach these people? So the English translation of our ancestors' records are sufficient. They are sufficient um, to convert our soul, right? To They are sufficient that we um, we will walk in, 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 in righteousness, right? And all the promises that the Most High um, said. The English is sufficient, um, but this portion of, of the service here at True Light Bath, y'all, we, we're trying to connect with the culture, our culture, um, and we're doing it through the language. We're trying to get back connected to how our ancestors communicated and 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 try and um, experience what they experienced for our learning, right? For our learning. So that's that's where we're we're kind of um, anchored to the language, the language in this language portion. And so uh, just to kind of um, get us all back in the same frame of mind, uh, uh, you know, pertaining to the language, um, we know that the quote unquote Bible is originally Hebrew language, Hebrew language, right? Translated into another language. And for us here in America, that other language is English, American English to be specific. And then we know that the main differences between Hebrew language and English language is um, Hebrew language is more concerned with how something functions first. That's the primary um, kind of purpose of, of, or the dynamic, or the, the, the difference in the approach of the language culturally is that the Hebrew language really is focused on how something functions, uh, whereas here in America, the English language um, is more focused on the aesthetics. And, and what I mean by that is, is um, when we read for comprehension, we try and picture in our minds what something uh, looks like <laughs> or feels like instead of what does that thing do? What is the function and the purpose of that thing? Those are the really main differences in, in the language. And then um, the main function or purpose of language in general is to communicate, right? And what we're communicating is our thoughts, our ideas, and our emotions. And it's based on cultural experiences. Hebrew culture experiences is going to see the world differently and act differently than when uh, the English uh, experiences, the American cultural experiences will see the world differently and react to the world differently than, than the Hebraic uh, cultural thought. And that's expressed in language, all right? So keep all that in mind when we go through to examine the text. And then Talmudina Bree, y'all get ready to read. Uh, we're gonna go to a familiar text this Shabbat, right? Uh, in the Hebrew, it's Hashifar Deberim um, Sheshwa Arba, right? And, and it's really the book of um, Deuteronomy, 
six and starting at four. And then Talmudin, get ready to read. Um, verse four will be Aki Nathan, if he's on. Verse five will be Akoti Shaquan, if she's on. And then verse six will be Akoti Talia. Um, and then we're going to jump down to verse 24, which will be Akoti Zamiria. And then verse 25 will be Bati Bat Zion. All right. And, and we're familiar with this text. We, we, we're very familiar with this text. All right. I'm going to start at verse one. Sneak, and, sneak. Uh, go ahead. Sneakers, I can't even think. Um, uh, last Shabbat, uh, Akute Umanai, so you can add her to the uh, Hebrew reading. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. I um, might not get to to uh, Koti Imana on, on this one. Um, I, I just saw a, te a, a message. Bat Bat Zion said um, she'll she'll um, yield to um, a Koti Imana for her verse. So Toda Toda Reva, we'll 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 keep that. We'll go that way. All right, Toda. All right, so um, get ready to read. Uh, let me share screen real quick. And let me know when y'all can see it and if it's big enough. We can see it. Okay, okay. All right. And I'm gonna start at verse one uh in the English, and then we'll pick up with the with the Ibrit reading with the uh Talmudin Ibrit starting at verse four. All right. And verse one, it reads, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yah, your Elohim, commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land where the ye go to possess it. Verse two says that thou mightest fear Yah, thy Elohim, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy sons and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. And verse three says, hear therefore, O Yisrael, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as Yah, Elohim of thy fathers, have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey, right? And, and well, I'll address that uh, a little bit later. So in verse four, we're going to pick up in the Hebrew, right? And so, uh, Aki Nathan, if you're ready, uh, Baba Kasha, verse four in the Hebrew. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Akad. Toda Rabbah. <laughs> Toda Rabbah. Verse 5. Kokti uh, Shaquan. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Wayahab Ta Eight Yahuwah Eloheka Bakal. La 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 ubakal nafeshka ubakal ma o ma o daka What's that? What's that? The uh, cool right under the dollar. What are you pointing to? The oh. last word that that uh, that the oh. cool under the dollar. Maudeka. There you go. Right. And 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 I think you're saying Ubakal, right? Yes. All right. Toda Rabah. Toda Rabah. Uh, verse six. Um a Koti Talia, Bab Kasha, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Wa ehu Hade Barim Ah Ela. Asher, a new key. A ele, Asher, a new key. Mizoka, a new, a no key. Mizoka, a yom. 
Ale Vavaka. Toda Reba. Toda Reba. And verse uh, 24. Let me get to it. Verse 24 is of Koti Zamiri, Babasha, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Can I be heard? Game. Was was a un was a was a way new Yaqua La Ash. Repeat which one? No, no, go ahead, keep going. La Ash La Ash Wotes. La la as wot. Is that correct? So la as la. You doing okay? La, Keep going. La as so wot. La so salt. So Okay, so it's called haku haku kim ha ha. Hakukim. You said Hakukim. There you go. Haele. La ye la year la year ah. Et Yahwa Elohe nu la la tobe la nu call Hayamim lach look. Lucha, Lucha yo tenu, Lucha yo tenu, okay. Kaha yom, Kaha yom, there you go. Haz, Hazze, Hallelujah, Toda, Toda. And then the last one, um, Koti uh, Imuna, Babkasha. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Ut Daka T T Ye Lanu E Nishmore La Asot Et Kal Hamit Hamit wa hatsot lifne yahawa elohenu ta asher sinu sin si wanu we'll go back over that one hallelujah hallelujah and the way they got it in the kuli there will be ziwa anu ziwa anu um and we'll go over that a little bit later Total breathing, total breathing, hallelujah. All right, now I'm gonna go back up and, and read it in the in the English, um, starting at verse four, right? And remember, we're talking about um, 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 Hebrew thought versus uh, English thought in the language, in, in, in the way the language is expressed, the way the language is, uh, is communicated through the experiences and all of that, right? So in verse four, we know it. Hear, O Yisrael, Yah, our Elohim, is one Yah. That's what it says in English. And then verse five says, and thou shalt love thy, thou shalt love Yah, thy Elohim, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thy heart, right? And then we go down to verse 24, and Yah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yah, our Elohim, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah, our Elohim, as he hath commanded us, as he hath commanded us. All right. And so, um, 
Toe breeding, uh, Talmudina breed, all praise to the most high, um, a familiar text, except uh, the 24 and the 25, but y'all did well in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see y'all's practice. Um, but, you know, Moray Samox recites this passage every Shabbat. Every Shabbat, he does a Shema, right? Um, both in Hebrew and in English. And we're very familiar with this passage. The Shema, this passage, this sentiment should be drilled into us by now, right? It should be drilled, even etched into our lead, into our hearts, right? And so pertaining to the language, what is Moshe communicating to the children of Israel? Right? What is he saying? What, what, what is he saying? Right? And remember, based on the experiences, he's communicating his thoughts, uh, his emotions, his ideas, right? Based on cultural experiences. So remembering all of that, as far as Hebraic thought and English thought, what can we get from, from what uh, Moshe is telling the children of Israel right here? And that's that's rhetorical. I'm, I'm you know I'm not asking that for an answer, just to get you in the thought process, right? And if cultural language is the expression of thoughts, ideas, and emotions based on experiences within the culture, then what is Moshe's experiences up to this point? Up to this point, right? Um, we know that this is the generation that made it. Uh, through the wilderness. This is the generation that made the cut, right? This is the generation that endured through the, the uh, wilderness training, right? This is the generation that's about to inherit the promise, right? This generation is about to receive their inheritance, that land that's flowing with the milk and honey as promised, right? They're about to walk into their heritage. They're about to walk into their heritage, right? And except for um, Joshua and Caleb, this generation was not at Mount Sinai, right? This generation didn't have the experience of hearing the Most High speak with his own voice um, the first Ten Commandments. This generation didn't get that experience. And, and, and remember, Moshe has already been told that he will not go over Yardin, will not go over the Jordan. He will not be there to remind the children of Israel and to guide them once they go into the promised land. Right. These are his experiences. <laughs> These are his experiences. Right. And this is the generation that's about to go over Jordan is about to inherit the land. They're about to walk into their inheritance. And right, and, and so when we hear that Moshe is using that language, hear, O Israel, right? Shema, Shema Yisrael, right? We know that that's just not listening to what Moshe is saying, but it's really paying very close attention to the instructions, the Torah, so you can do what is being instructed. And not just to do what's being instructed, but to do it with um, the, in, the intention, with the desire to do what is instructed completely and correctly. That's Shema. That's not just listening to what's being said. That's really paying attention with the desire, with the desire to do it completely and correctly. That's Shema. Right. So based on Moshe's experiences and the experiences of, of, of the Most High, his experience with the Most High and his experience with training Yisrael uh, up to this point. Right. His language, his language is Shema. His language is Shema, you know, and then in, in English, we might they, they translated it as here. They translated it as <clears throat> as here. Hear, O Israel. But from a cultural language perspective, based on Moshe's experiences, he 
use the word Shema, which is a a a more uh, exhortation. It's more of a a encouragement. <laughs> it's more of a wholehearted encouragement, right? And so we know also that in the Hebrew language, uh, it's very concrete. Um, and if we go up, let's go to, to verse um, five here, right? That wa, right here at the beginning, is a conjunction, right? It means it's joining two thoughts together. These two thoughts are related, <laughs> right? And, and if we, that wa can mean and, it could mean uh, also, it could mean for, um, right? It, 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 it's just joining those two thoughts together. It could also mean um, then or, or, or in relation to. So if, if, we don't, if we don't understand that why, if we kind of skip past that why, Right. In English, we don't normally start a sentence with and. <laughs> You're right. We, we don't normally start a sentence with and. But in the Hebrew language, that and, they got it translated in English as and, but that wa is very important to the context. To the context, you know, either of the passage, it might even be for the whole chapter. If we, if we kind of skip past that wa, we might miss the whole context. And so this was a conjunction joining those two thoughts together. Hear, O Israel, Shema. Really pay attention here, Yisrael. I'm, you're about to go into the land um, and, and I'm not gonna be there anymore. I'm not gonna be there anymore to kind of help you and guide you through and, and, and to, to teach you, to reinforce what you've been trained on. So here, pay attention. Not pay attention to Moshe. He's saying pay attention to those instructions. Pay attention to those instructions. And then that verse five starts with the wa, joining that emotion, that thought, that idea to this idea that you shall love the most high with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. So is Moshe commanding Yisrael <laughs> to love the most high with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might? Or is Moshe saying, if you shema, how well you shema is how you're going to love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. We know we've been commanded. We've been commanded um, to, to obey the most high. We've been commanded, right? We've been commanded to hear the most high. That, that's the command already. And then that wa, that wa is joining those thoughts together, right? And saying, is Moshe saying, commanding Israel to love the most high with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might? Or in, in, in context or in Hebraic thought, he's saying, is he saying, when you shema, when you really desire to understand these instructions and to do these instructions completely and thoroughly, um, you can't help but to love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Right? The same with verse six. Is, is he telling us that? We shall keep these words which he command this day in our heart, in our lip. Or with that wa, is he joining those thoughts together that if you shema, how well you shema, that these words will be in your lip, will be in your heart. Right? And then the rest of the chapter is the same sentiment. Whether you see individual commandments or whether you see the result of how well you shema, Moshe is expressing his thoughts, his emotions, 
and his ideas based on his experiences with the Most High, with the children of Israel, and the 40 years of training in the wilderness. And not to mention that one time that Moshe did not shema, cost him his inheritance. He understands that. He experienced that. He's trying to express that in the language to the children of Israel. Right? And so Shema is the focus. Shema is the focus. Everything else in the chapter is based on the Shema. It's based on how well you hear the instructions, how well you pay attention to the instructions with the intent to do them completely and correctly. Well, the, 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 the commandments that the Most High spoke with his own voice uh, in chapter five, really, because that's where Moshe goes back and recites the first 10 commandments that the Most High spoke to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, where this generation didn't get that experience. This generation didn't get that experience. And then here in chapter six, he's given us really giving the children of Israel a sort of a pep talk, you know, encouraging them, pay attention to what you've been taught. Pay attention, really hear, really comprehend these instructions, these commandments, the Torah. Pay attention to them. And then, do them with a desire, <laughs> with that, with that zeal that you 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 want to do it completely and correctly. And that's how you will love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And then everything else in this chapter six, it'll be etched in your mind. You can't help but be etched in your mind if you shema the how well you shema. How well you Shema will uh, drive you to teach your children. How well you Shema is how you will talk about it and think about it when you when you lay down and when you rise up, right? When you go out your gate and come back and through your gate. How well you Shema is how uh, these are these. Uh, these things will 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 manifest. They will be there if you shema. You can't help but be there if you shema, right? And then Maury Smock edified this part that we're about to go into very well last night. <laughs> As a matter of fact, while he was going through it, I was like, oh, he's teaching my lesson for today. <laughs> he's teaching my lesson for today, right? And so shema to perfection right? Shema to perfection, right? And if, if, if you're still on the milk as a babe, either new to this truth or a babe in real age, then your Shema and your following these instructions will not be as perfect as someone who is drawn from the breast, which is fine, which is fine. We have to grow in it. We have to grow in it. Remember, it took the generation, this generation, 40 years to be perfect enough to receive the inheritance. And then even those that are weaned from the milk still need their meat and their bread uh, kind of broken up into bite-sized pieces, right? And then as we become, as the scripture says, hoary head, gray hair, older, elders, as we become elders in this truth, based on Shema, and then the desire to, to, to do these instructions completely and thoroughly. Rehearsing these instructions, 
And then the, the, the more perfect we love the most high with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. It's inevitable. You, you can't help but to love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. If you shema, if you rehearse these commandments, if you try and walk these commandments out with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, if that's your desire, if that's your desire to do these instructions, then you can't help but love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. For a practical example, just, just um, based on everyday uh, situations, right? So you're, have, you're having a conversation with someone about everyday common situations, and y'all have a difference of opinion on the issue that y'all talking about, right? And you go to the scripture to support your opinion. And the other person with the difference of opinion could care less about the word, about the scripture. That's a difference in uh, how well you shema, <laughs> how, how important it is to you to hear these instructions so that you can understand what is being instructed with the desire, with the desire to do them completely and correctly. You know to go to the scriptures. That's how you base your everyday life. <laughs> you Shema, you Shema, because you know how important these instructions are to, 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 to your life, for your preservation. Whereas the other person could, couldn't care less about the word, about the scriptures. Even though both of y'all are speaking English, you're speaking a language from a Hebraic perspective, whereas that person that could care, couldn't care less about the scriptures is speaking uh, from a different language, different cultural language perspective. I hope I hope you're 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 understanding and following where I'm going. And it's also a difference um, in cultural language. Um, like I said, you, you, you both of y'all are using the same English words, but your language is coming from a Hebraic perspective. Whereas that person that could, that couldn't care less about the scriptures. His, his, his language, even though he's using the same English words, is coming from a different cultural perspective. And then the last two verses, 24 and 25. If we Shema, all the instructions, all of Torah, right? Verse 24. And like I said, even in the English is, is sufficient for Yisrael. The Most High made sure that it was sufficient for Yisrael. In verse 24, and Yah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yah Elohim for our good, always, for our good, always, for our comfort, for our shalom, for our pleasure, and also for our function, to function as a cultural people. That's our language. That's how we find favor with the Most High. And he'll preserve us as his people, his cultural people. He gave us this culture. And then in verse 25, the more perfectly we shema as we grow, as we grow, as we mature, as we become more perfect, the more perfectly we shema the instructions of Yah, with the real desire to do them completely and correctly, the more our righteousness, our righteousness, and we went over righteousness, our righteousness, um, and 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 I, and there's a difference. Um, well, I won't get into that. That's a lesson for another day. But our righteousness, we know our righteousness is Torah, but our righteousness is what's acceptable 
to the most high. Our righteousness is our acceptable character and our behavior to the most high. So it's saying, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe. And that word observe, we know it's shamar. That word observe there is, is shamar or a variation of shamar. If we observe to do all his commands, if we guard them and protect them as precious, <laughs> if we guard them and protect them as uh, as precious, that is our righteousness. That's our acceptable behavior, our character that is pleasing to the most high. If we observe to do all the instructions, all of Torah before the Most High, the way he instructed us to do it, the way he instructed us. The end result is loving the Most High. And that's the language that Moshe is using here in, in, in uh, uh, Deborah chapter six, right? Because chapter five, we see he is he's, he's reciting, that's what, the English here is Deuteronomy, which means the second uh, rendering, the second um, um, the second uh, utterance, right? In the Greek, it's Deuteronomos, which is basically the same thing, the second time, right? So in, ver in chapter five, he's done that. He's went through the first 10 words, the first 10 commandments that the Most High instructed our forefathers at Mount Sinai. He did that for Yisrael back in chapter five. In chapter six is more of a, uh, like I said, a pep talk. He's trying to encourage the children of Yisrael that they that the Shema, really the Shema is is how we love the Most High. If we Shema with that desire, we can't help but to love the Most High. That's the product. That's the that's the that's the byproduct. That's the result of how well we shema. And like I said, that's that's Hebraic thought compared to the English thought. And if and if we kind of skip over um, the Hebraic perspective, we kind of miss out on on the cultural uh, expression of what our ancestors are trying to communicate through these records that they left behind for us. All right, Ms. Bell, let's, let's, let's turn to, to Mishiach or Proverbs chapter two from the top and, and, and that'll be the close. And I think this punctuates the point in the, in the difference between Hebraic thought in the language and the English thought in the language. Not saying that one is 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 bad and one is good. I'm just saying one is Hebraic and one is not Hebraic. One is Hebrew culture and one is not Hebrew culture. That's the point here, right? And and this language and cultural portion of true life by Athiyah, we're trying to reconnect with our cultural language to see to try and really get a concrete understanding of what our ancestors, our forefathers are trying to say to us. So let's turn to uh, Mishlia or, or Proverbs. And we're gonna go with uh, chapter two. Sneakers, I can't, uh, early as I can, Eliyahu who had his hand up, I don't know if you wanna end. Yeah, I didn't see that. Uh, while we're getting there, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Zakane. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpachan. <clears throat> I wanted to underscore what you're saying about the differences in the language. Um, and I want to say and broaden it. There's a difference between the Ivrit and every other language on the planet. Uh, there's tonation, vibration, um, differences, and 
not just that, but every other language on the planet is finite. And Ivrit is eternal. And I would say that because it is the language that everyone spoke at one time before the languages were mixed. It is the language that Yahusha uh, spoke to um, uh, Rab uh, Shaul, and it was noted as being in the holy tongue. So I want to undergird what you're saying that one represents the eternal, whereas the other represents the finite. Uh, Hebraic thought, uh, culture is forever pregnant because it not only deals with the now, but it deals with the future as well. So I, I just wanted to emphasize and undergird what it is that you are you're saying uh, and bringing out. Are you? Hallelujah. Toda Rabaz, I came for for that support and 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 that that wisdom and knowledge that you just brought out. Um, how the 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 and if you really think about it, um, this is outside of my lesson, but when you really think about it, um according to, to to Moshe, according to the first five books of the Bible, according to Torah, everything was brought into existence in the in the Ebrit language. Everything was brought into existence in the Ebrit language. And like uh, Zakane was saying, when the Most High separated the nations is where the languages started to um, morph and, and started to, to um, change. So Toda, Toda Rabbah uh, Zake. So we're at Mishnah, Proverbs chapter two, and I'm just going to read it. And this will be the close, Mishpaka. And um, we're, we're not going to get into the culture portion today. Um, Most High Willing will pick right up. Um, the, the language portion won't be so long next Shabbat, and we'll get right into to, um, the culture um, at uh, Shofatim, um, what you were supposed to have been reading throughout the week. Um, we won't get to culture today, um, but most high willing, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into it next Shabbat. So we're, we're at uh, Mishlia Proverbs chapter two, and I'm just going to read verses one through 11 to kind of punctuate um, this cultural language. And, and if we can dig into what our ancestors are communicating to us from a Hebraic perspective, we get a more concrete understanding, a more concrete understanding. And that's growth. That's growth. And, 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 and the more we grow, the more we practice um, based on our, how well we Shema is the more perfect we become in our love of the most high with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our might. Right. So we're at Mishnah, Proverbs chapter two, starting at the top. And it reads, um, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of Yah and find the knowledge of the Most High. For Yah giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is the buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of saints Verse nine, then shalt thou understand righteousness. Verse nine, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. Verse 10, when wisdom entereth into thine heart 
and knowledge is pleasant unto thine soul. Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. This is cultural language. And if we can tap into how our forefathers communicated, we get a more concrete understanding. And this interaction really, <laughs> this interaction between Moshe and the children of Israel, it sounds a lot like uh, what Mashiach was doing with the disciples right before his crucifixion, right before he was crucified, right? How, how, um, how he was telling them that the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the most high set apart spirit would comfort them and remind them and teach them all things after he was gone, after Mashiach was gone. Remember all these words that I've been teaching you. Remember the Ruach of the words and there's no new commandment. Mashiach wasn't bringing anything new. The same way I think Moshe was not giving us new commandments to love the most high with all our heart. That's not new. But what he was saying is, once I'm gone, once y'all cross over Jordan and I'm no longer with you, Shema, Shema, that's what's going to preserve you. That's what's going to make you righteous. That's what's going to be pleasing to the most high. And if you Shema completely, if you Shema and you have a desire to do these instructions completely, you can't help but love the most high with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And all the other um, commandments fall in place. I pray that this you glean something from this, this presentation <clears throat> and at least provoke some thought, you know. Um, maybe there's something a little bit uh, <laughs> deeper like Maurice Samak always says, try to see what's behind the words that's on the page. That's how we get a, a concrete understanding. That's how we get a concrete understanding from our cultural language perspective. And like I said, the English is sufficient. <laughs> the English is sufficient for, uh, for Israel. But if we can tap in to what our forefathers are trying to communicate to us, I think we get a more concrete understanding from that Hebraic perspective um, than from that English perspective. Hello, yeah. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise on this thing to the Most High. A great presentation, um, Elder. And one thing I like that you did was you, uh, when you talked about that being the second time that he was kind of giving them like a pep talk going into the land and you spoke that he's speaking from experience also because he's already known what the forefathers did in the land for not listening so he's just actually giving them warning like i can't get in because i messed up he still brought them to that place but he's really encouraging them that shema is like really encouragement that please hit these words do these words because this should be what gets you saved this should be what gets you in the land keeps you in the land is for your good always and moses uh had already seen so many people fall by the wayside in the wilderness. So to that younger generation was really trying to encourage them, please listen as many of my brothers did not listen as myself allowed uh, my emotion to get the best of me and I didn't get be able to get in. So I, I like the way you tie that into the language and the expression that Moshe is bringing forth. And as far as when you're saying about the Shema, the Shema is something that's customary um, that a lot of people will, uh, recite, you know, uh, when you go to certain synagogues and things like that, the Shema is something that's done um, throughout the day because it's actually a reminder. So, uh, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Akai, Torah Rabbah, Zakein, Torah Rabbah. Great presentation. Hello, yeah. I will now yield the floor to Adon Kanakia for his two-minute warning. <laughs> 